Good morning and welcome to the Lake District. If you're new around here, hi, I'm Caroline and I'm exploring this lovely region with my other half, Andy, for the next week. This morning we've driven along to Buttermere and we're going to do a nice easy amble along the lakeside before we then do a very sharp ascent up towards Blue Bruton, Red Pike, High Style, High Crag and the Haystacks before coming back down to the lake shore and hopefully back to the car all in one piece. That was a rather delightful wander around the lake. The lake seems to be busy even like really early in the morning on a bank holiday Monday. So we've seen people out wild swimming, there's been people out on paddle boards and kayaks. Some really cute, adorable dogs have been out swimming and it's just got a really nice feel to it. But we've now crossed over onto the other side of the lake and the staircase up this steep mountainside is now starting. Reading the OS map, we were expecting that this staircase was probably going to take us about an hour to accomplish. So we've just taken it very, very steadily, just getting a really good pace rather than getting ourselves completely out of breath. But we are now coming up to a fence line that doesn't seem to have forest after it. So I feel like oh, it might be a fake top. And it's just that the forest is now coming to an end. I guess the trail must have looped us back towards the valley that we had to walk over a footbridge to cross over down at the very bottom. It's got a gorgeous tumbling waterfall and it is so pretty, surrounded by the powerfully heather. I didn't know that there was a waterfall here on this trail. Wow, 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 wow. It's plateaued off and we've got to walk across this plateau that is just filled with heather. And unlike the heather that was a little bit further down, it wasn't quite as vibrant. Up here it is so much more vibrant. This is stunningly beautiful. This morning, when we were right down on the edge of Lake Buttermere, there's a couple that said, oh yes, we've been up here and it is quite a scree scramble up at the top past the tarn. So that's what we were expecting, but actually it's a proper rock paved uh, staircase in some parts, more like a ramp in others. But it's definitely better than what I was expecting. The closer that we are getting to the top, a couple of things to note. One is that the temperature has quite considerably dropped and the winds start to pick up. Oh my goodness. And oh, therefore that's why the fleece is on, just trying to warm up a little bit. The other thing, and that's why I'm going, oh my goodness, is that the scree that that couple had talked about earlier on, turns out that it wasn't immediately after the tarn. It was in fact a bit more up and it is so tricky. I've slipped a few times, slipping again there. <laughs> and again, and it's just a little bit of a nightmare to try and get up on. Maybe it would be easier if I just, you know, stop this on the camera and concentrated on where I'm putting my feet. But it's just to give you a bit of an idea that it is quite technical and a bit challenging up here. Stopping here for 
lunch. I'd say if you knew that we were going to have ham and egg sandwiches, give this video a like. <laughs> <laughs> Because it is ham and egg sandwiches. Yeah. Squashed ham and egg sandwiches. <laughs> yeah, we might have forgotten to bring up some Tupperware boxes this time around, but we have got some food that I pre-made and brought up in Tupperware boxes, so we're just waiting to basically eat that for an evening meal, and then we'll have Tupperware boxes for sandwiches. Cheers. Cheers, my dear. That last section was really, really hard work. I think it would be one thing if you were trying to do that kind of scree scramble. If you were just starting a hike and it would be a lot easier, but my legs were already so tired after such a steep climb up and they were very jelly-like and then throw in that you're like battling against like earth that is just slipping away from you. I was so grateful to see the can at the top, but <laughs> the views are spectacular. All the way up, we've just pretty much been looking over Buttermere and Crummock. And yes, of course, those have opened up beautifully for us. But now we can see over into Ennerdale. I can just see out there through the valley. I'm assuming it's probably Derwent Water. I've got a much better view of Keswick and you've got Skidor, you've got Blencathra. We can see quite a few of the peaks that we're going to be going across. And then there's parts of the Lake District that I'm really not so familiar with, but I can see way more peaks, but I'm afraid I have no idea what they are. We've just been fortunate enough to see an unkindness of ravens just swooping down, it like kind of in the valley, but like right up at the top here. And they've just been going back and forth and you can hear them croaking away. I'm pretty sure it's called an unkindness of ravens when there's a group of them. and it's 806 meters above sea elevation. In fairness, we did actually start at 150 meters, so it's not quite as impressive sounding, but this is the highest one out of all of the different peaks that we're gonna be doing today. High five. I'd seen a lot of these metal posts and I just assumed that they were like farmers fence posts because there are an awful lot of sheep up here. But now as we're walking along the ridge line, it just feels like we're following them the whole way there. This isn't me saying like, hey, when you guys go do this hike, just follow them because I don't know. But what I'm wondering is, is there anyone who's watching this video who actually knows whether these are like a waymark trail and you follow them along? If you do know, it, it would be really helpful if you could just leave in those comments below because other people who might be watching this, they might also be grateful. Of a good ridgeline walk like this you've just got like all of these valleys that like snake in and out so what it means is that even though you're walking nice and high up the views are constantly changing as you then arrive at the next valley to see a different tidbit of buttermere water Once we hit the top of High Crag, the views have opened up over the haystacks. And I have to confess that I've obviously heard the word haystacks for many, many years, and I've seen all the photographs of what they look like. And I personally have never quite understood why they were called haystacks before, and I think it's because I've never seen the photographs from above. And from up here, they really do look like haystacks, except they're just craggy cliffs. The path as well is incredibly well 
I, I guess maintain like it's super obvious where all of the footpaths are and I guess that's the difference between doing what we've done so far which isn't very popular I mean we've only seen a handful of people the entire day and then the haystacks which is obviously really really well known and then we started to look further out into the distance and we've been able to see Scarfell Pike and it is so obvious that it's Scarfell Pike because the pathway up that looks more like a main road to be honest. <laughs> Just a really quick pit stop because Andy's getting a little bit hot so he's taken off of his jacket and I've just got my homemade trail mix of what is it <laughs> pretzels oh yeah pretzels a whole load of mixed nuts and a whole load of mixed tropical fruits that I realized that if you buy them all in separate bags and then you mix them all up together it's so much cheaper than buying like proper trial mix and obviously you get the fats from the nuts you get the salt from the pretzels and then you get like the sugar from the fruit it's just ideal for hiking i love it now we begin the climb up to the haystacks and we think that it's going to be about 150 meters of elevation gain. The fleece did not last long on. I don't know what I was thinking. I think before we actually started the uphill climb, the fleece should really have come off because where we are right now, we're in quite the valley. It's very shaded and sheltered and all of that wind that we had way up at the top there's just none of it here so that's not cooling me down and then of course because we've lost quite a lot of elevation as well to get to this point it's just warmed up the day's gone on so that will have warmed up and I feel like that was just a bit of a rocky mistake so let's get this put back in the bag we can keep on hiking a little bit more pleasantly I take back what I said up there when I was looking down onto it saying oh it looks like a really like well-maintained path and I guess because it's like super touristy and well-known within the lakes because actually looks can be deceiving from up on that mountain because this is really difficult it's like proper scrambling we've just scrambled up to what we thought was going to be the top because we could just see this cairn over the horizon. We've come across this absolutely gorgeous tarn. We could see it on the map, but we can't find a name for what it's called. But it turns out that this cairn right here is a bit of a fake cairn because we can see on a very slightly higher elevation off to my left-hand side that there is another cairn over there. So I think that must be the haystacks. Time. Hey, we made it up to the haystacks, which is 597 meters. Oh, so not quite as tall as the last couple, actually. No. Or, or three. It's, I think it's the, it's the sh shortest one. Shortest one, lowest one. Yeah, yeah, lowest yeah out one. of yeah. out of all of them. But I, I maybe arguably, what you've actually got up at the top here, arguably the prettiest one. I say that it's arguably the prettiest actually up here just because you've got these boulder rocks that have got moss growing on them. I can never really tell what it is, but there's these white marks on them that I actually think makes them look very pretty. And then the in amongst heather, and then you've got the long green grasses, and then you've got a few tarns dotted around as well. I'm not saying that the view down onto the lakes is any better up here in comparison to the peaks that we've been on before, but the actual view around the haystacks, oh, I can understand why it's so popular and so many people like to hike up here. The 
person seems to desperately want to come out and just say a quick hello. And what's really cool is that we've realized that that behind us is the back of the Honister Slate Mines. And that's exactly where we did the Via Ferrata last year, but just on the other side. But my goodness, the view is stunning. You've got Buttermere, Cremock Water, and then you've got the sea peeking through the valley of those two hills on the other side. And then with that sun desperately trying to peek through. Oh yeah, wow, what a way to end. Well, I'm saying what way to end this hike. It's obviously not the end, but to end the, the ridge walk. Jeez, this is stunning. trying to make a few decisions on which route is best to take. This is a bit of a trickling stream in quite a canyon. And when we were like way out on the top of the fells over there and we were looking down onto it, it seemed like the other side of this stream just seemed to have the better or more established path. So we are just having a look on the OS map at the moment to see if there's a way up here to be able to get across onto the other side or if it's that we've come down too far and it's too much of a canyon and therefore we're going to have to use what looks to be I'm guessing some kind of footbridge down at the bottom according to the OS map we will see Oh, the tiredness is starting to kick in and I have to confess that when I get to this point of tiredness, especially when hiking and trying to vlog, I'm just like, I just don't want to vlog anymore. But I also have got to remind myself to turn around and I'm really pleased that I did because behind us there's some like proper tumbling waterfalls but unfortunately they are off in the distance just a little bit and looking up on the trail that we've just come from I can also see that there are some people still behind us and they're obviously not wild camping because they are coming down like what we are so at least we're not the last ones off of the fells tonight. It's just gone half six and it is past my dinner time, let's put it that way. So just munching on an apple. Turns out that we did actually have, I think just the right amount of food that we needed for this hike. And we just turned a bend and wow, I don't know what those hills are up on the other side of Buttermere to where we've been hiking today, but the sunlight that's just lighting them up is absolutely stunning. And it's that sort of like golden owl, golden glow that's going on. And then the heather as well, like the purple of the heather. And there's a lot more blue sky than what there has been for most of the day. So it's, it's just all of the colours. It's the purple, it's the green, it's the blue. But then you've got the grey of the clouds and you've got the grey of the rocks. Sometimes it just pays to have like an all day hike where you get the gorgeous sunlight in the morning, you get the gorgeous sunlight in the evening. Um, but yeah, I think, as I say, playing a little bit fast and loose with the food, but I think we've just had enough. But this is, this is literally the last thing that I've got but I mean I can see the white house and that I think is where the car is parked so we're getting close. <laughs> 